let's consider the application of separation of variables to Laplace's equation. So Laplace's equation in two dimensions becomes the second derivative of some function v with respect to x squared plus the second derivative of v with respect to y squared is zero. This has lots of applications like the shape of a stretched membrane on a frame, uh, the electric potential in a region where there's no charge, or the steady state temperature of a surface. Uh, and so what we're going to now do is investigate solutions to this equation um, using separation of variables. So let's consider an example where we have v is equal to zero on three sides of a rectangle, a flat rectangle. This might be the case of the electric potential being set to zero because of, the, of conductors on three sides of a plate. So here is our two-dimensional plate, lengths a and b. So v is equal to zero on the two horizontal sides and zero on the bottom. And it's equal to some constant up at the top. And what we want to know is what is v of x and y inside of this box, inside of this rectangle. Okay, to do this, we're going to use separation of variables. And separation of variables is uh, a very uh, useful technique that has a couple different steps. So the first step is to assume that the v of x and y can be written as x of x times y of y. That's part of the separation part. Then we're going to plug this into our differential equation above. And when we plug that in, we get the second derivative of x with respect to x times y plus x times the second derivative of y with respect to y is equal to zero. Next, we divide this entire differential equation by the combination x times y. So then we get 1 over x times the second derivative of x with respect to x squared, plus 1 over y times the second derivative of y with respect to y squared. And that all adds up to zero. Next, we separate our ordinary differential equations that we have here. And what I mean by that is we say that the uh, x equation, uh, is 1 over x, the second derivative of x with respect to little x squared, is equal to some constant lambda, which tells us that lambda plus 1 over y, the second derivative of y with respect to y squared, must be equal to 0. Just plugging in for that, lambda. We can write those in standard form. So the second derivative of x with respect to x squared is lambda x. And a similar thing for y, except that's equal to minus lambda y. Notice the minus sign. In order to solve these, we need to know is lambda equal to 0, greater than 0, or less than 0. So in order to figure that out, we need to use our boundary conditions. Uh, we're just going to jump ahead using our boundary conditions above and say, well, we're pretty sure that lambda is going to be less than 0, so let's try that. So let's let lambda equal minus k squared so that we know that it's less than 0. Let's solve the x ordinary differential equation and use the boundary conditions to simplify the solution. Okay, so the x ordinary differential equation now is the second derivative of x with respect to x squared is minus k squared x, has a solution of a cosine of kx plus b sine of kx. Okay, so now let's impose our boundary conditions. And our boundary conditions were that at x equal to 0, here we have v equal to 0. So v at 0, y must be equal to 0. And that's equal to x of 0 times y of y. Or really what that means is x at 0 is actually 0. At x equal to a, the right-hand side of our rectangle, right over here, v is equal to 0 as well. So then we have v at a comma y is equal to 0. But that's x at a times y of y. So that really means that x at a is equal to 0. So those are the boundary conditions that we want to impose on our solution that we just found. So let's impose them now. x equal to 0 says that x at 0 is equal to 0. Plugging that in, we just get a, which tells us a is equal to 0. So Setting a equal to 0, we now have x is just b sine of kx. At x equal to a, now we get 0 is b sine of ka. And we can make this be 0 if k times a is an integer multiple of pi. Or another way to say that is k is n pi over a, where n is some integer. 
that would be a way to solve this boundary condition. And so let's choose that as our general solution. So now x, we're going to write as b sine of n pi over a x. And recall that lambda, which was minus k squared, is now minus n squared lambda squared over a squared. So this is half of our solution, the x solution. We need the y solution now, too. So let's solve the y ordinary differential equation. And so the second derivative of y with respect to little y squared is minus lambda times y. And that's k squared times y. So that tells us that y of y is c e to the ky plus d e to the minus ky. So altogether, then, we have that the v of xy, which is x of x times y of y, can be written as, well, it's the x solution, b sine of n pi over a x, times c e to the n pi over a y, plus d e to the minus n pi over a y. We can distribute this b in and combine to redefine what we're calling c and d. But even more importantly, we can find that the general solution is actually a sum over all possible n values. And this is still a solution to both the differential equation and the boundary condition. So the general solution, v of xy, is the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity, sine of n pi over ax, c sub n, e to the n pi over a y, plus d sub n, e to the minus n pi over a y. And so now this is our general solution. And in order to find the c sub n's and d sub n's, we're going to need to use the other boundary conditions in the y direction. And so in the next video, we will investigate how that works.